All right, black, white, aristocrats. Um, this is a deck that I've enjoyed playing playing a lot. Um, it's got some strong draws in Priest of the Forgotten Gods. This card in the right shell often feels like if you untap with it, you win the game. It also has some grind to it with cards like Midnight Reaper and Seraph of the Scales and Ajani to a degree. You've got quality spot removal and Mortify. And even you occasionally have just aggressive draws sometimes in the back of like Gutter Bones, Witness, and Tithe Taker and stuff like that. Uh, let's go ahead and dive on in. Dive into some matches here, shall we? This is... So there is a streamer tournament on Thursday that I'm going to be playing in. This is one of the three decks I'm considering for that. Either this deck, the Abzan midrange deck that's coming up next, or like Teamer Climbs, kind of like Old Faithful. Are there any standard decks that I won't delete from my MTGA at the moment? Uh, no, not really. There's a ton of different things going on in this format that I like. I guess I guess the three I just listed I'm thinking of for the tournament would be my, like my picks for my favorites. This game's like really good with an untapped land, so I'm gonna keep it. We're on the draw. Uh, you cannot, unfortunately, make Prime subscriptions renew automatically. And I'm sure that's intentional on their part because they don't want people, like, using the Prime sub and, like, setting it and forgetting it on people they don't actually watch. The moment... The moment passed for a single Wrecking Ball, but here are the bits. What's going on, Distrobidator? So I think I'm just supposed to jam Priest here. It feels bad when I get Essence captured, but this card's so powerful in this matchup that this is the window to get it down here. Because once they have a third land, they have Wizard's Retort as well, so they just have more and more ways to get it down. Yeah, the Abzan midrange deck is very similar to the hero build while cutting the the cards that are specific to, to, to needing hero. Alright, so... What are the odds Orzhov Enforcer and Gutter Bones resolve here? Pretty low. Pretty low. Really? Okay. The Virtuous J, thanks for the three months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. So if I use this here, they're just going to use this to counter it anyways. That being said, I could be cheeky and use this now and not. Well, the mana gets used for gutter bones, but I, I am just going to wait till their turn because I want to make them spend the storm timber mana on their turn. Cardinal, thanks for the five months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. And Robinson for the 14th month. It's a long time. Thanks for keeping me here. Well, that's good for us. All right. Well, let's do this in response now. Oh, this is bad. Oh, I'm dumb. I should have... I should have let the trickster trigger resolve because now it's going to tap my 1-1, one, one, right? Now. Now they're going to tap my 1-1. One, one. Is this deck on the website? Yeah, something within a few cards of this is on the website. I'm trying out a couple of different cards in this configuration today that I think might be good, but... Yeah, something, something very close to this is in the standard portion of my website. So if I'd have, if I'd have sequenced better there, I could have had this as a blocker. They have another Merfolk Trickster, yep. Your website version is Cast Down instead of Enforcer, sounds right. Alright, so now... I play this plus a Mortify, I think. Or do I just play Midnight Reaper? I think I'm actually just going to play Midnight Reaper. This card's pretty bad in this matchup. Uh, I can't cast Lyra. This is tapped. It got tapped by the Trickster. This is to make up for being too lazy to log in and renew my sub regularly. Well, thanks for the support, Quintus. I appreciate it. Ugh. Audio bug. 
Alright, we'll restart here in a hot second. Um, so, if I play this... I think I want to play this, play this, and then I'm going to priest sacrificing my priest and my hunted witness. Then this gives me this. This leaves this to block the other trickster, and then Mortify kills this. Priest, priest is pretty unbeatable, and it gets going in this matchup in my experience. Sweet. All right, sorry. These people are great by their stuff. These people also great by their stuff. Back to your regularly scheduled Magic Arena, which will have a slight glare due to the, due to the reconnect bug, but since they updated the cosmetics. No audio, no bug, and graph quote. So our, our, our beautiful sleeves will be gone and there'll be a slight glare. Strickles, thanks for the eight months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. No attacks here because I want this to trade with this. Morning, Genomancer. The glare's a feature, right? So this will give me two, three, four, five mana. I'm actually gonna try and just mortify this one. I guess I should attack first there. So that way when they try to dive down like that, I, I gain the point of life. Smart on their part keeping the unblockable creature because that's more likely to win the game than something with flying. Although they're, yeah, they're pretty far behind at this point. Cast down and Moment of Craving are great here. Ajani and Midnight Reaper are not very good. Um, Pontiff's not particularly great either. Duress is fine. Probably this Mortify as well. This seems fine. This, this matchup tends to be pretty favored for the Aristocrats deck in my experience. Not only is Priest of the Forgotten Gods very good against them, but like we have Tithe Taker and Seraph of the Scales, which are also excellent. This card makes their interaction more expensive against us, and this card just blocks super profitably. Moment of Craving is ugly. You gotta cut it, right? I had to pay my dues so I could send a message in chat once a week or so. Well, I appreciate it, Trickles. Your dues, your dues keep me around. They pay, they pay for daycare. I'm not going to lie, Captain Magar. My final three deck choices might have been impacted by the fact that all three of them have a exceedingly high number of foil cards available to them. Like, look at, look at this hand. This deck, Abzan, Midrange, and Teamer Climb all just like very heavily foil. I think they're all good decks too, but they're also just like super heavily foil. That's a good draw. I'd like to duress on one. I would like your Curious Obsession. Yoink. Scary Terry. Priest is here to flex to flex all over the mono blue. I'm going to see an upkeep diddle on this. Really? No upkeep diddle is interesting. 
Am I still exempting deck submissions on modern? Am I exclusively focused on standard? I am. So details on how to submit decks um, can be found here on my website. The TLDR for modern submissions is that they are more expensive. So I don't get to get gutter bones back this turn, but I think that's fine. Because, like, this makes them sack a dude, and then the 1-1 one, one flyer gets to trade with the Terramander or eat the dive down. And I get to draw a card from it as well. So, notably gutter... Notably... Oh, they're just not... That, that makes sense. Notably gutter bones can only be returned to my hand on my turn. So even though they took damage from, from this here, I cannot, cannot use this. Wow, that's incredibly unfortunate for us. I think we're actually dead here. Just drew, drew too many lands. Needed. No, the sequencing on the trickster kept me from using it on my turn. Yeah, like if I, if I even just like had another creature here to like pound through, I could be okay. So I think with the current situation, I'm just like passing back here. We're gonna we're gonna mortify the tempest in to get them to use the dive down. And like we're still kind of far behind here. I need to like hit a. This probably seals it up. So I'm taking five, six, seven on this combat step. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess I play this and then sack it and then see what happens. But I guess I guess they just storm tamer me, right? If they don't storm tamer me, I can draw Lyra here. Oh. Okay. One one Lyra, please. Congrats. I guess I guess maybe they viewed that as bait, so it's not unreasonable. Like if I had another way to kill their kill their Tempest Shin. Lyra, Lyra or Sarah for the scales would have both been great there. Just wanted to say I really support what you're doing with the channel. Sub only chat's been great, and I wholeheartedly support your pushback on the six minute per hour ad stuff just on principle. Well, thanks for the eight months, Root Samurai. I appreciate you keeping me around. At the at the end of the day, folks like you, Samurai, are are the reason I'm able to do this. So I don't really want to make the content worse for everyone by flooding it with ads. Well, that that is a handful of cards. Uh, I guess I just take the Curious Obsession, right? Entrancing Melody is pretty annoying, though. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to take the Melody. I think I can play through the rest of this with Tithe Taker, Mortify, and Seraph. Jack the Manic, thanks for the 17-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to do... I'm So I could duress and take the Curious Obsession here, but because I have Tithe Taker, if they Obsession their Siren Storm Tamer here, they guaranteed can't protect it next turn because even their, di their Spell Pierces cost two. Uh, the six minutes of ads per hour is that I was asked to run six minutes of ads per hour to buy Tempo Storm. And uh, we're negotiating out what that means. Because I do not want to run six minutes of ads per hour on my channel. I think I'm going to take Curious Obsession here. So they can they can opt, sure. Worth noting the wizard retort does cost them three still, because Tithe Taker had ones, but Storm Chamber takes away one. So even though I hit this fourth land, I can't play the Seraph this turn. Yeah, I think I just let this happen because it lets me stick Sarah for the scales. Just lets them. This lets them trade with Tithe Taker and have me not get a 1 1, but like getting Seraph down is way bigger. This is easily one of the best cards in this matchup. Oh, 
Well, I appreciate the Prime, Neric. Really, even even the Prime is like... I, I really appreciate it. Thanks for the nine months. Hope you're having a good Monday and a good start to your week. Never never feel bad if you have to scale back what you do to support here. This should be this should be your extra fun money. Don't, money that should go to important things that you need to live. Don't don't feel bad about taking money from here to do that. I appreciate the prime. Alright, onward upward, backward, forward. Yeah, I do I do like this deck when I've played it. I think it's maybe I think it's a little bit soft to the Grawl aggro deck, but feels like it has pretty good pretty good play in a lot of other places. Out outgrinding Sultai with this deck's a lot of fun. Although one of my worries with playing it if in this thing is I think the rounds are timed. So like if there's time rounds, outgrinding Sultai could be an issue. Like bumping up against the clock. So what you're saying is I shouldn't liquidate my IRA to keep your stream alive. Nope. I'm saying I'm saying five bucks a month is great, or Twitch Prime is the equivalent, so. Thank you, thank you for that, and don't do anything silly. You cannot fall back into diamonds. So once you're into mythic, you're there to stay. I'd say I'm like would like a white source on one, but it's like pretty reasonable otherwise. Still, basic mountain says you. Uh, no, the having a wizard in play makes it cost one less. So it's, it's basically a wash. Blue, red, styron, storm tamer. I think I'm ready for some new cards. I don't think I'm the only one by any means. Um, the standard deck submissions for the queue have slowed down a pretty significant amount. Which is, which is probably a good thing. I think I have time. I think looking at my calendar, I have time to play like 40 more standard decks from this current format starting today. And I think um, there's like 25 decks in the queue. So like 10 to 12-ish more more decks to fill things in. And if we, if we don't get all the way up to 40, I might just take a look, like an extra day off again next week. Taking, taking some extra time off before the new set drops doesn't seem like the worst idea. Morning, Eugene. I don't think Tokens is a deck that I care about, Chewy. Tokens isn't really a deck that people play in my experience, so I'm not I'm not making any of my decisions based on what the Tokens matchup looks like. I'm leading on this rather than this because I feel like there's a chance there are Wizards Retort deck. Essence Scatter. Okay. So happy, happy to get that scattered rather than my Seraf. I I literally have played zero games with the Abzan mid range deck. My thoughts were just that in every other deck I play hero in, hero seems like a mediocre magic card. So I like the Abzan hero deck, but maybe it's the rest of the deck that's good and hero's still a mediocre magic card. We don't we don't get a full spoiler on Friday, do we? That's super early. Is it really Friday? Do you have a source on that? I thought I thought it was the Friday before pre-release, which would make it a week from this Friday. No, you're right, isn't it? It is the Friday before pre-release. No, maybe maybe you're right. It's a week before pre-release. No, the pre-release is until the 27th, so it should be the 20th. I believe it's a week before pre-release. This attack is bad. This attack is bad. I, I was talking and not thinking. If I if I activate this, if I activate this, they're gonna shock it in response and get a two for one. Yeah, now they get to coil the seraph too. The attack the attack's bad for two different reasons. The first is that it doesn't protect the seraph from a lava coil. The second is that it gets blown out. I was thinking I could attack and then sacrifice the tide thinker to eat their thing, but that block with that play on board means that they have a shock. 
Yeah, so two more weeks makes it exactly the week before pre-release. So exactly like I was saying. <sighs> Terramander is going to pop off soon. I think I'm going to lead on this, give Sarah Vigilance attack. They do have Wizard Retort. Okay. That that means that they are in fact able to activate this next turn, which I think means I'm just passing here. So they have three in here, so this costs five to make a five five. I mean, I'd argue it's a deck now, Motionless Potato. In fact, I would probably say that if if it's going to be something with, like, like the Blood Artist style card, the deck's going to look completely different than what this deck does. Like, this is, like, a mid-range deck with, like, a Priest backup plan. Like, there'll probably be a more all-in. More all-in on the Aristocrats plan deck. Could have Vigilance and Death Touch on the defense. Not if they trade with Enigma Drake. Kizzizzle. So if I... It might be right to just power both of these up. A Johnny's pretty bad against these decks full of flying creatures. He's like, this card's like a hedge against um, control and mid range because it generates value. But he's definitely not at his best here. He's basically just going to read like, make a couple of 1 1 counters, and then, and then die, gain a little bit of life. Okay, C. Thank you for the four months. I appreciate the third of the year. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I have no idea, Chewy. I'm really bad at predicting the future. Arcanic Fire. Thanks for the four months. See you on the YouTube. Thanks for dropping off your Prime. This attack is so weird. I guess it's not really. I'm gonna block here. I assume they have an instant or sorcery to cast, so this trades here. If we if we hit an untapped land next turn, we can memorial plus replay Seraph. Otherwise, I'd really like to draw another Seraph or a Lyra. Um, Death Touch. Thanks for the two for one. My card's a mythic. It's got a lot of text to put in. Until our paths cross again. Stupid storm teamers. Uh... Right down to ten. It's not the worst. So, I didn't hit the land to be able to pick up and replay the Seraph in the same turn. However, I can Mortify plus play the Seraph in the same turn, which is sweet. I think I'm just taking the hit here. 
We have another dive down? Wizard Retort. That's super aggressive. Huh. I'm just gonna take this hit. The Wizard Retort with the Folly... With the Folly Seraph in play is weird. Do they have... I wonder if they have... Um, if they have another Essence essence Scatter? They showed us one of those earlier. Yeah, with the with the double storm tamer in play, the wizard retort seems like a weird. Like maybe maybe they missed the folly and just like assuming I had nothing. Brian, thanks for the ten months. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Essence Essence Scatter is one in a blue. Or I'm, maybe I'm thinking of using the wrong word. Whatever. The one card's one in a blue. Scatter, scatter, not capture. Capture, capture's the new one, right? That's blue, blue. Yeah, I, I was right, right? Scatter, scatter's the old one that's one in a blue. I'm going to be a little conservative and leave both of these back just as like extra jump blockers just in case there's like lava coils and shocks in my future that end up with this Enigma Drake killing me. I don't know. They didn't have Lava Coil last time. But I guess they could have drawn it for the turn. I think, I think they might have just missed the Memorial. I think there's a chance they just missed the Memorial. Is that a good one? It seems like a good one. Yeah, there's going to be a bunch of awesome spoiled cards. Like, for the next two weeks... Everybody's gonna be like, oh wow, this card seems really good. And like, that's why you just need to take a deep breath and wait to start thinking about the decks you want to build. It's, it's, it's okay to be excited, but just like, just wait to build stuff. There's gonna be a ton of awesome things that come out that look possibly playable and awesome. Wow, it's Pat. Thank you for the Twitch Prime for the eighth month. Welcome back. Uh, we've played this deck a ton, Guard Variety Troll. This is one of the three decks I'm considering playing in the Thursday tournament because I think it's very good. I think it's both consistent and powerful. After this next rotation, no. But rotation doesn't happen until October, which is a long way away. Yeah, a website called Fandom Legends is doing a 16-player streamer tournament. Yeah, of course the tournament on Thursday's best of three. They're not they're not Wizards of the Coast trying to reinvent the wheel that already rolls down the hill. Of course, of course it's best of three. With with sideboard. Traditional best of three. I really don't know what they're doing. They're like this weird Wizards Drake's matchup. I feel like a hefty majority of X will be good after rotation or heavily MTG finance. Got not not having to deal with magic finance is just like quietly the single best thing about Magic Arena. Just like getting to put my fingers in, in my ears and be like, I don't care. I don't care if you're trying to screw people. Just get out of here. I think I just want all my removal here. I think Midnight Reaper is a little bit better than Pontiff. Although I guess Pontiff, that's not true. Pontiff protects my Seraph a little bit from Lava Coil, which is valuable. All right, let's do it. Maybe, maybe I want to rest because they're so counter spell heavy. Maybe that's the case, actually. It's just like Midnight Reaper and Pontiff out, put Duress in. How many creatures does this put me at? This is 22 creatures. I don't like Duress against stock Drakes because Duress in general tends to be ideal when your opponent has... Duress tends to be ideal 
when your opponent has um, lots of reactive cards they're holding on to, and Drake tends to be a pretty proactive deck. But because this version of Drake's is explicitly playing, is explicitly playing, um, what's it called? They're explicitly playing like Wizard Retorts and Essence Scatters. I think that changes the dynamic. So like, if I was just expecting like Spell Pierces and Dive Downs, I don't like Duress. But because they have things that counter my creatures, I think Duress becomes better. This hand is super sweet. Gutter, Priest, Gutter, Activate Priest, Cast Contempt. There's nothing wrong with enjoying Team of Reclamation. And I think that's something people miss a lot of the time. Like when I talk about decks being a problem, or like I think they create tedious gameplay, you as the player should never feel bad for enjoying a deck that's a stain on the format or that creates obnoxious games. You as the player, it's not your job to balance the game or make the games fun. You, you as the player, your job is to just enjoy playing the game. Something, if something's not well balanced, that's not your problem to worry about. That's Wizard's problem to worry about. Uh, Sess, if you look in uh, the subs discord in the Warhammer TC channel, I actually posted a link in there yesterday to a website that posts um, that posts deck lists and stuff and other, other miscellaneous content. I feel like there's some kind of interaction here, so I don't just want to run my priest into a counter spell. So I'm gonna play gutter bones here and it's out land, I think. Like that's one of the biggest things I'd like to try and instill on people. Like if I talk about something I personally don't like or anybody talks about something they personally don't like, especially with regards to magic, right? Like, don't let their personal enjoyment of how they play magic impact what you get out of the game. One of the things that makes magic such a good game is that it's it's lots of different games all wrapped up in one. So just because you like something that I don't like or vice versa doesn't mean that we can't both enjoy magic, right? All right, well, I just want to contempt this, right? Like, they are they don't have any blue mana up. Let's just, like, get this off the table. Bye, Felicia. Devil's Advocate, thanks for the three months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Woof. Burning, burning both contempts before Phoenix comes down feels a little bit bad. Do I just get aggressive here? How aggressive do I want to be? Pretty aggressive is the answer, I think. Because if they go to one here, I get to play Priest and then it's lethal. So like if they go to one, they have to kill this. And they have to keep kill something on the board because I'll, I'll have lethal attackers around them. Devil's Advocate. I'm not sure if I caught that or not, but at any rate, thank you for the three months. Welcome back. Yeah, it could be the two Ajani's I have in the main deck of this deck, uh, Ven Faith, might just be better as Fine Finality. I don't know that I liked Four Man of Raska, but Fine Finality was really good when we played the Abzan build the other day. Siren, Storm Tamer, or Removal. Keep Priest from killing them. I could win the game by attacking, but that involves drawing less cards, so it seems strictly worse.
How are we doing, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever you're out in the world. Thanks for dropping in here today. My name is Jeff Hoglund. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30, 40, sometimes even 50 hours a week. If you enjoy standard best of three constructive with sideboards, this is definitely the channel for you. We play a ton of different decks here. CNCCN, thank you for the three-month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So if you enjoy a lot of variety in your construct, especially with the new shit that's going to be coming up at the end of the month, we're going to go through a ton of decks here in a very short amount of time. So be sure to stay in for that. Um, as always, I'd like to give a shout out to my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without their wonderful support. So thanks to all of them for keeping me here. I'd also like to plug a couple of my sponsors here really quick. Harry's Razors would love to help you get that close, clean shave. Using code Jeff Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash sugar shave, you can save $5 in your brand new shaving starter kit with them. Remember, chat, just because you like playing the degenerate decks doesn't mean you need to look like it. Lucid Sound is the maker of my wonderful headset here. If you head on over to lucidsound.com, you can save 20% plus get free shipping by using code Tempo. DK Crack, thank you for the Twitch Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for shipping it this way this month and keeping me employed here. Neo provides wonderful candy flavored protein bars. You can go to Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash Google bar. You can take 10% on all of your orders there with them. And of course, I'd like to welcome everyone out there to Hoagland. You know, there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now, and I appreciate you dropping in to spend part of your Monday here with us. Hope you're having a fantastic start to your week. A couple of days ago, you were sharing thoughts and brewing a blue-green wizard's deck. Did anything come of that? Yeah, I wrote a couple of deck lists down and then threw them all away. Because not having removal spells in your deck is real bad. Alright. Uh, we'd love to draw a two-drop or another one-drop next turn. So we can go one, two, three, four, five. Just right on up the curve. But it appears to be feeling a little soul time. All right, chat, strap, strap yourselves in. It's gonna be a long and grindy road. It's gonna be a long and grindy road. Hopefully, hopefully it's gonna be a long and grindy road. I feel like the games we usually win in this matchup are a slog and the ones we lose, we get run over. So hopefully we're in for a slog. Lyra, not particularly great in this matchup because she often just gets shot down and then dies and does not, not a whole lot. Seraph, much better than Lyra because even when she gets shot by Vivian, she leaves behind a couple of tokens, which finish the Vivian off. Well, my opponent's going on a Safari here. Although it doesn't look like they have particularly good attacks. Defense. Defense. Well, there goes Masera for the scales. Really need to draw one of our removal spells here. That is not a removal spell. I mean, my opinion hasn't really changed, Joshua. The format, the format hasn't really changed at all since the last time we played that deck. Nah, I think taking Sarah is pretty correct. They die, they die in the air pretty quickly. Otherwise. Huh? I'm just gonna start charging things up with Ajani here. I understand you are in need of I think I want to make this one bigger because there's a chance that they they're currently stuck on lands. There's a chance they like can't leave Death Touch up for their Seraph next turn, which would be good for us. This is a matchup where getting a touch more removal out of the sideboard is nice. The cast downs to Kotleaner Guard, also pretty decent. My opponent has a piece of spot removal here. This combat could go kind of poorly for me. Ideally, they're not going to be able to kill Midnight Reaper, but if they have, like, Vraska's Contempt, I'm going to be probably be in a bad spot. Even, even cast out would not be great, but if they, like, attack to pressure the Ajani and then they, that forces them to, like, trade boards... Yeah, I think we're going to see a Contempt on the Midnight Reaper pre-combat, or pre-blocks here. Really? Okay. I 
think I just do this. Just like let a Johnny die. I don't I don't think so, Mega Vega. I think you just like end up being a bad Drake stack at that point, probably. This doesn't surprise me. And they want to they wanna spend that spot removal there, not because they care about the hostage taker, but because if they don't kill the Midnight Reaper, each of these draw cards, which allows us to kind of outgrind them here. So we're looking to be in a pretty bad spot this game. Did not, did not see a priest and they had removal for the Reaper. We have Lyra going for us, at least, I suppose. They have, like, land Vivian, we just get dumpstered. And the problem is, Wild Growth Walker is the reason why, like, the, the Saltite X impossible out aggro, right? Like, even if we get kind of aggressive in a position like this, like, it's 23 to 25 right now. Yeah, if the rest of their hand is steaming, steaming dog poop, we might be okay. I think I'm just supposed to be aggressive and race here. Actually, I'm not even going to attack with this. I don't want to trade these here. Because this this sitting back on defense holds back everything else, right? And like Lear is gaining 5 every turn. Which seems quite good for me. So I gave this Vigilance, but I actually don't want to attack with it. Because I don't want to trade these. Because they'll, they'll give theirs Death Touch and trade up. This is a matchup where we want to cut some of our lower quality cards like Hunted Witness. They just like don't have an impact really as the game goes along. And we don't need them in the early game to keep ourselves alive. So this is this is the part of the game where like the game looks kind of close until my opponent starts playing Hydra Increases. We were just we were just getting animation value there, is what it was. Like, again, looks and feels kind of closed. And, like, they play Jade Light Ranger in game 12. And, like, play land this turn and next turn. And then they play a Crisis for six. Their, their engines are kind of online. And ours aren't really doing anything at the moment. The fact that they can't give this Vigilance is working out well for us, though. Because it means they can't really pressure us back. And, and still hold it back on defense for this. Yeah, Priest, Priest would take this game and just, like, slam dunk it. Activate Seraph eight times at their head step. Well, and like so, I know it. I know it feels bad to like draw a lot of flames in a row like this. But I think one of the things people don't think about, especially with regards to Sultai and the blue green decks in general, this format is one of the reasons why Sultai and these blue green decks are so good in these mid range matchups is because these mid range games just go long, which means you're going to draw a lot of lands. But the Sultai deck has a payoff in Hydra increases to make it so when it's drawn all these lands, it's less impactful. So, like, sure, it feels bad that, like, I've drawn 10 lands and 18 cards, but, like, if there were Hydra increases in my deck, I would be less punished for having done that, right? Yeah, and I think, I think a lot of the time, like, the, they just aren't that good at being a tempo deck, basically, Mega Vega. Which then means you're basically just, like, a worse version of, like, the Teamer Climb deck that I've worked on a lot. Mm. I don't know if this Pontiff is actually good in this deck. 
You might see this right, being right just like... Someone had mentioned earlier they had cast out to the slot in the main deck, and I could see that being correct. Would free up some sideboard slots too. Pontiff. Pontiff's a little bit better against control, but I can just like put cards that are good against control in my sideboard in those cast down slots. Is Spyglass good here for Vivian and possibly Vraska? No, I don't think so. In fact, the fact that they have multiple Planeswalkers that I might want to name is bad. Also, Spyglass gets stolen by Hostage Shaker, which makes it less than ideal. The Spyglasses are there primarily for the Tefri decks, and then they search for Azkanta Wilderness Reclamation decks. This hand's great. I mean, boarding something out a lot, one of the things that you want to break yourself of as a magic player and a deck builder especially is that just because you often board a card out doesn't mean that card isn't worth playing. So post-board, your decks tend to turn into having more answers that are that are specific. Whereas in, in game ones, you want more generically powerful cards. So like a card like Pontiff is a threat that's kind of resilient against control and against aggro, it can like play defense, okay, right? So like those, that style of card is a reasonable effect to have access to. Still super good. I don't know that I'd call it super good, but I think it's fine. If we draw an untapped land next turn, we should run away with this game very quickly. So, of course, we didn't. So, if I would have drawn a land this turn, I would have been able to play Midnight Reaper, and then I would draw three cards on this Priest activation here, which our opponent can probably never grind through. Unfortunately, sometimes your 25 land deck doesn't draw any. Okay, perfect. So, let's do this, and then do this. Oh, I know the Harpooner's coming here, too, so I just get to eat my thing. It's a little sad. <sighs> I think I want to just do this. Untapped land, please. Untapped land, please. All right, that'll, that'll do, pig. I only have six cards in hand, right? Yep. All right. Go. I've got seven cards now, and they are all beauteous, chip. Wow, that's rude. I have to discard the hand size now. Synonymous RS, thank you for the tier one sub. I really appreciate that. Welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic uh, start to your week. I'm just passing here like I could give her a love tap but like if they go to Vraska's Contempt this Midnight Reaper I want to sack it to Priest in response which I think I think just waiting is correct here if they play like one threat here
This is very good against Hostage Taker 2, which is great. Welcome to the grind, baby. Right, I think I think we unstumbled soon enough that we're gonna be okay this game. And again, gutter bones can only be activated on my turn, so I'm not picking it back up because that's not a legal play. I think I'm just going to go ahead and hold the free step again here, even though this is at 7. Uh, Mega Vega, there's a deck list on your screen. We are, in fact, playing Hunted Witness. I just sideboarded it out against Sultai. You can always find the deck list on your screen via the Stream Decker widget. You can also type exclamation point deck in chat to get a direct link to the deck list. So if they finality me here, the Seraph leaves two tokens behind to keep the Vivian from ulting, which is pretty reasonable with the Ajani. If they finality, I use the Priest to sack the Gutter Bones to the Kotli to draw another card. Feel like there's some removal heading in my direction. Yeah, feels feels like contempt here, right? I think I'm gonna lead on this and see what happens. I don't think I wanna play both. We'll start by attacking this way and see where we go. So I'm gonna so this So sacrificing gutter bones here deals less damage to Vivian, but I think it's the correct line. They don't, they don't gain life this way. I have a land. Um, I think I want to play Tithe Taker, and then I want to play a Johnny and put another Tithe Taker into play. I think I just want, like, max power left over if they sweep the board here. Yeah, I think, I think they're setting, I agree with this, but I think they're setting up for a finality, and I want to just maximize the afterlife effect I have once they finality me. Because if they, if they finality me, they're actually dead here, right? Because the Tithe Takers are 3 power and then a Johnny gives plus 2. So if they finality me and then don't have a removal spell or a way to block one of the spirits, they're dead. Which in this, this game's been a great example of outgrinding the Sultai deck with this deck. Because, like, they've had, they've had Vivian read online this entire time, right? They just, like, can't do anything with it. We're just, like, playing through it. Yeah, nice trigger. Stop it. Stop it. Get some help. That game, that game was a phenomenal example of Priest of the Forgotten Gods just like doing what Priest of the Forgotten Gods does, which is taking the game and running away with it when it goes unchecked.
Do you ever sideboard differently with this deck on the play versus the draw? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's any specific instances of wanting to be have your deck set up differently on the play versus the draw. None, none that come to mind. What do you think of the new feather card with war? I don't know. I don't I don't look at I don't really pull up spoilers and look at them midstream. I will probably have an article up on Cool Stuff Inc. later this week or early next week talking about cards that have been spoiled so far that look like they could have potential in different places, but I really save I really don't start working on things until we have a full spoiler. When do we get some more party bus time? You can always find all of the decks and when they're coming up in the deck queue on my website. If you ever ever have a question, what's coming up when? We always stay real organized around here so you can answer questions like that readily. Yep. Got it. You shall not be aggroed out. I think we've played against this opponent a couple of times today. I honestly couldn't tell you if we've played against them a couple of times today or not. I have not a clue. So, so no, it doesn't because I'm not paying attention. I don't know, maybe if I was paying attention, it could, but I also think that's kind of unlikely to matter just because, like, getting other decks is so cheap in this application that most people play lots of different decks. dead Jim. And this is one of my worries about this deck which I think might keep me from playing it on Thursday is I think the deck when it doesn't have I think the deck's average power level when it doesn't have priest going is probably a little bit low like I'm not I'm not sure that the surrounding tools that we have in this deck make it make it super super potent like the games where your priest goes unchecked are just like night and day versus the ones where you don't have it. The London Mulligan, the cards you put go on bottom, correct? Memes, dreams, and video games. Put my bits towards JAC Modern or Blueback Pirate Standard, your choice. We'll do Vixed. Thanks for the support, I appreciate it. What's on Thursday? There's another streamer tournament on Thursday that I'll be playing in. It's run by a group called Fandom Legends. All right, races for two. I'll draw two, X is four, obviously. Like, I'm kind of at a point where they, like, finality me and the game ends. I, like, get some tokens left over, but that's it. Another Contempt in my future. Just cast down. I think it's, I think it's both too narrow and there aren't enough other hits. Figure of Destiny, I think both those things are true. 
I think that's I think that's trying to play a bad card at the cost of maximizing one, or like the payoff's not quite there because like they just have a removal spell. Then your priest doesn't matter. I don't have anything else to do with my mana. Let's attack with this. Free roll. Called the bluff. Death Panda, thanks for the 13 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. The one thing that's really abundantly clear to me when we talk about things like Militia Bugler, and this is this is something that you'd be good to familiarize yourself with as a deck builder, is um the hypergeometric distribution tells you, like, what are the odds of hitting with things like that? And, like, the number of things you need to have in your deck that are hits for Militia Bugler to make it not just be a 2-3 Vigilance for 3 is much higher than a lot of people think based on their gut instinct. Like, generally speaking, you need, like, probably close to, like, 22 to 26 hits, if not more. Costly Plunder seems kind of mediocre overall. Again, you just want to, like, shy away from playing too many individually weak cards. That's definitely an individually weak card. If you're... Especially in established formats like this one that we're playing now, the easiest way to, like, figure out for yourself, like, is this card individually weak or powerful, is, like, look at all of the other decks that are good in the format and, like, see how many other decks are playing this card that I'm thinking about playing. And if other decks aren't playing that card, it's probably individually weak. Mastermind's acquisition is absurdly clunky and slow. Very, very, very clunky and slow. Yeah, I think I think for the most part acquisition is not a good card. 
Like, I know it saw a play as like, like it, it saw a play at the Invitational because like, that's how desperate these players were to have sideboards to like have some control over their own destiny. But I think, I think in general, it's just not very good. It's good and, it's good and slow, best of one decks. Yep, I agree with that. Have you always lived in the same part of the country or have you lived in other states? I mean, if you ask my wife, I'm constantly in a state of confusion. Does that count as a different state? I feel like it probably should. But no, to answer, to answer your question, I grew up in the Chicagoland area in the, the south suburbs. And then I, uh... And then I've resided in the central Illinois area for the last, uh... Moved down here when I was 20 for grad school for the last eight years now. No, it's only only the sideboard, dude. Light. Poor little priest. Lyra is actually one of our better cards in this matchup. So like Seraph and Lyra are like the cards we're interested in playing. My friend. Yeah, I've been I've been a bitter I've been a bitter old man for a really long time, so let me into school early. Let's see if let's see if they go they go like cantrip cantrip bacon bolt they can take the leer off the table we probably can't beat bacon bolt at this point that's a top that's probably not a good sign for our hero mental states are accepted but the population count is too high well Right. Mm, that's a dispersal is a good point. I should probably keep uh keep a land in my hand to discard to that. They did, in fact, Entrancing Melody, my priest. Yikes. Maybe they have nothing left over. Maybe. As the pendulum begins to swing in the other direction. If they don't kill my taker or my priest and I draw and I draw another creature, maybe we can get back in this. Like they have what, two phoenixes in the bin here? <laughs> All right, I'm done. Moving along, moving along. Yeah, the the more I play this one, the more I kind of feel like 
the more I kind of feel like um, the games without Priest active are just like too weak to make up for like what the deck is doing like when this card gets removed or when you just don't draw it so i think i'm going to count this one out of the three that i'm considering for thursday need to eliminate them quickly 